It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the UConn women's assistant tennis coach, Coach Marjorie On Deck. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get started in college coaching on the tennis side? Um, so my personal experience in playing college tennis was pretty incredible. Um, so I actually got straight into coaching like right after college um I played a little bit after college and then I got straight into coaching and um between being in an academy out in SoCal and just um working a lot one-on-one with junior players I just like I love that environment one of college tennis but also being with players individually so I just I just wanted um a a place where you know you can be with the players all the time working with them and also in a team environment um and I just felt like personally like I learned so much from um my years in college tennis that I kind of want to implement in that into growing players too um on the team what was it like playing in the New England area very cold (laughs) um I uh, it was different. I mean, uh, up here in New England, especially in juniors, you play like about eight months a year indoors, at least training. Um, and it was a lot, it's a lot smaller than a lot of other sections in the United States with USTA. Um, so it was a little bit more intimate uh, with, I think, like friendships, like about like I was friends with a lot of like the top 10 girls. Um, we, were, we all had close friendships. And um, I personally just was very fortunate of growing up with my mom as a tennis coach. Um, So I grew up at a tennis club about a mile from our house. Um, So I didn't ever have to like, a lot of players like end up going to academies or moving to Florida or SoCal. And I personally, I had, there's about 24 of us that all could have played college tennis, not all did. Um, So it was kind of almost an academy style uh, club. And it just gave me the opportunity to play against great players and to um, really develop my game. What was it like playing college tennis for Memphis? Uh, It was great. I loved it. Um, I wanted uh, to go somewhere either south or a little bit far away. I wanted to uh, experience something different than the New England area. Um, But to me, it was pretty incredible because starting my sophomore year, we got a new uh, coach and we kind of um, changed the culture of the program. I mean, he kind of did. And um, it was just an incredible experience. I mean, playing there, like some of my best friends are from there now. Um, and just, um, sorry, went through my mind. Um, and just it developed me as a player uh, and a person. So it was kind of great to be a part of a program that our culture basically changed. Um, we went from basically being like one in 17 my freshman year. And then when he came on, we basically transformed the program a year or two after that I left, they were top 25 in the country. So it was like great to be a part of that experience. And even still to this day, like I, I have very close relationships, like I said, with my teammates and also my old coach and his family. So it was just, it was so much fun. It, I mean, that's the great thing about college tennis is, or just college sports in general, you get your forever friendships. Can you talk about, of course, what were some of your accomplishments during your time at Memphis and what was the game day like? I'm sorry, what was? What was some of your accomplishments during your time at Memphis and what was game day like? Okay, um, so like I said previously, um, I think the greatest thing was just kind of changing the culture of the program. Um, it completely transformed. I mean, Memphis is still doing great to this day. So being a part of that process, um, looking back, it was tough and during that time, but I think that was, to me, one of the biggest accomplishments. Um, And one of the, 
there's like a couple of matches, I think, that I clinched points up to make it the 4 3 win. So those are pretty big. And then just uh, regionals, my junior year, me and my teammate, we went to the semis of regionals. Um, we beat a couple of ranked teams. Um, so that was just an incredibly fun time. Uh, we beat a couple of teams. We were basically the underdogs. So to me, that's, I don't know, sometimes the funnest of times is when you're the underdog and when. Of course, coming out of college, what was it like getting into college coaching and going to Southern California? Um, so when I went to Southern California, I was working in an academy. The, um, the cool thing about the academy is to me, it was a lot like college tennis. So we had about 60 or 70 kids in the academy and, you know, you're working with the same group every day. Um, we had about five or six specific groups. So I was one of the assistant coaches of the girls group. And, and then you're traveling with these kids pretty much every weekend, every other weekend to tournaments. So it's kind of a team environment. Um, they have their own school there um, and you have your own specific group that you work with. So it wasn't, my transition was like, it was easy. It, it honestly felt like college tennis. Uh, and yeah, like I said, like you're with the kids all the time, every day. Some of those, those kids that I've coached there, I still have friendships with them and keep in contact with them. A lot of them are in college right now. Some are now out of college. Um, so it's been like a great, a great pro a great thing to have. Um, and it kind of, it honestly helped me a lot to jump in to college tennis also, because it was so, it was so similar. What were some of your roles and responsibilities of being the travel coordinator and the recruitment coordinator? Yeah, so it was mainly um, the travel coordinator. Um, There's someone else that was more in recruit. I mean, we we're as uh, coaches, we we're all recruiting to get players to come either between summer camps or sometimes being at other uh, tournaments. But um, so my job personally was, yes, I was assistant coach for about for a few hours on court every day. And then I was doing the tournament travel coordinating. So I was signing up 60 to 70 kids up a week for tournaments, um, making sure making sure with the head coaches what tournaments they wanted their kids to be playing. And then I was making travel plans for all of the um, coaches going to the tournaments. So it would be anything from each and every kid's schedule, like specifically at times, and then basically telling the coaches you have to be here, there, and everywhere, and then booking hotels and all that. So it kind of, it gave me two different aspects. It gave me the administrative aspect of the academy, and it also gave me um, the coaching aspect. And I mean, and a great thing too, and I meant to mention this earlier, is like being out there, I like learned and transformed so much as a coach. I worked under a lot of amazing coaches. Um, so being a part of that, not just tennis-wise, but also an administrative part um, and traveling. I mean, college tennis is also tra a lot of traveling. So it kind of shaped me to move into this position pretty quickly. What was it like getting the position at UConn as the assistant coach? Um, it was unbelievable. I mean, for me, it was really cool because I grew up in Connecticut as a kid. Um, most of my family lives here. So coming back to Connecticut and getting this position uh, was it was kind of just a privilege. It was cool to be a part of a program. I followed UConn basketball since I was a small kid. Um, and, and just stepping into this, this role has been incredible. I mean, learning under coach Marshall and just working with this, like we have an amazing group of girls, um, which it's just been a lot of fun. It doesn't feel like I basically come to work ever. <laughs> it doesn't feel like a job to me. It just, it feels like I get to come into a place that I have fun every day. And of course there's challenges, um, but it's been an incredible learning experience. Um, and I just love being in the team environment with, um, with these girls and even just UConn as a community. Who are some of the teams that you play in your conference? Um, so out of conference, we have pretty much every year we play B BU, Boston University, uh, Army, um, we're in the Big East Conference, so we'll play Villanova, Xavier, Georgetown. Um, I'm getting it now, I'm coming in a mind blank. Uh, we also have Quinnipiac, who's out of conference. Um, and then in, back in conference, we have Xavier, St. John's. Um, so a lot of different teams. So most seasons, we play a lot of the same teams. We kind of, you know, go there, they come here. 
And then there's just, there's a few out of conference teams. We actually just switched back into the Big East this past year. Um, and before that we were in the American Athletic Conference. So it's pretty cool to be back in the Big East because years ago we were in the Big East and it kind of gives us the freedom to not as travel as far and as much, which is really nice. What was it like, obviously, getting to go to, obviously, a Xavier and Army that are in your conference? Um, it's great. Uh, Army's not in our conference, but we play them basically every year. Army's, I mean, a really cool place to go to. Um, it's beautiful. And they, they actually, ho- they've been hosting a lot of regionals, so we've gone there quite a bit of times. Um, I have yet to go to Xavier. Um, I think we're, we're playing them home this year. Um, but, ex- uh, or sorry, I'm like in a mind blank of our schedule, but, um, we haven't been to Xavier yet. Cause we just got back into the conference. We were supposed to play them last year and it didn't end up hap- happening just because of COVID difficulties and travel and stuff. Um, but hopefully we get to go there soon. Of course, in your previous conference, what was it like playing teams like East Carolina? Um, it was great. I mean, we had a pretty massive conference when, um, we were in the AAC, so we traveled um, anywhere from East Carolina to Texas to Tulsa to Memphis. Um, it was kind of all over. Um, the competition was really great in that conference. Um, it was really high caliber, and yeah, it was a great experience, good learning experience, I think, for our girls. And now jumping into the Big East, um, I think there, we have a little bit more of an advantage now, which is great. What does a typical game day look like as the assistant coach for the women's tennis program? Um, so typical game day, we usually take the girls out for a meal, um, like a pre-match meal before uh, we go to the match. Um, and then we get there. Uh, we usually warm, you know, warm up for, give the girls some time to kind of you know, settle down, get there to digest. Um, and then we usually warm up for about 30, 45 minutes, get the girls pumped up. We have pre-game talk. And then we go straight, you know, straight into doubles. Um, there's no warm up. Uh, it's a little bit different with tennis. Um, most matches you have like warm up, but college tennis, we don't have the warm up anymore. So it goes straight into doubles and play the doubles. And then we have about 10 minutes in between doubles and singles, talk to the girls again, and then go back out there. What is it like, obviously, seeing the girls play in the doubles and then obviously seeing them play singles by themselves? Um, so it's it's a little bit different because doubles is, it's, it's so quick now in college tennis. Back when I played, it used to be an eight game pro set now, uh, with, with ad. And then now it's a one set and no ad. So it's pretty quick. Um, so sometimes it's great to see how the girls kind of are stepping up with whether they're nervous or they're, you know, fighting right off the bat. Um, so that's one thing. And then the next thing is just seeing the girl, the girls of where their kind of game is at that day. Cause you know, day to day with tenant, I mean, any sport, like, you know, you could be at your best and you could be struggling a little bit. So kind of watching them, how they go straight into doubles and then taking that going into singles. So they're a little bit two different types of game styles, basically Um, doubles. You want to be a little bit more aggressive coming to net singles. You you kind of play a little bit more into your game. Um, but it sometimes just allows us to say like, all right, hey, you're not doing this today. You need to step up and do this for singles. If they're playing both doubles and singles, cause not, that doesn't always happen too. One might play doubles, a doubles match that day, not play singles. One might play, not play doubles and play singles. What does the recruitment process look like for prospective student athletes looking to play college women's tennis? Um, so, Usually some girls reach out to us. Sometimes we reach out to them. Uh, if Especially we reach out to them if we're going to a specific tournament. Um, so we kind of get our list ready for that. Um, and then we kind of keep, you know, you keep the communication going, set up a phone call, see, you know, what they're looking for in a school. And then um, kind of seeing them, if, if we don't see them at a tournament, you want to see, uh, you know, a video. So you know, if they, if they like what they hear about UConn, we like what we hear from them, you know, we're keeping the process going. Um, and then mainly just keeping up with results. And, you know, if, if we're super interested, they're super interested, they come on, they basically come on a visit. So um, it's just kind of, you know, a back and forth process to 
seeing, you know, if, if not just if we like them, but if they really like what we, we have to offer. Was it like obviously going on the road to these tournaments and seeing these athletes? Um, it's great. It's a lot of, to me, it's a lot of fun. Um, I just, even if I'm not recruiting certain players, I love to see how the game of tennis is developing. Um, and just, you know, to me, like I've always loved sports. So just seeing athletes compete has always been a fun thing for me. Um, but yeah, it's fun and it's, it's really great getting, you know, just to know a lot of different people, um, for even myself, just you know, learning the process, of not just recruiting, but, you know, just people skills. So it's been, it's been a pretty, it's a, it's a great, cool process. Um, and, you know, just meeting to me, it's always meeting new people. Um, and that's, that's, what's been a lot of fun. Cause there's usually a lot of coaches at this. So I've, I'm constantly meeting new people, not just players, but also other college coaches. Of course, what advice would you give those players that obviously see you coming to the matches that what are some of the things that you look at in those players? Don't be nervous. Um, I found that, you know, a lot of players, you know, they see a college coach and, you know, they get all these nerves. One, don't be nervous and just, you know, compete hard. That's that's the biggest thing is um, give everything you have out there. Uh, we to me, like, I don't just look at, you know, if a player's winning or losing, I mean, it's, you know, if they're, how athletic they are, how competitive they are, um, if they're, they're staying calm during the match, um, winning or losing, and just, and to me, a big thing is, like, character, seeing how they carry themselves on the court, um, you know, because you don't want a player, you know, to be, you know, throwing a tantrum after every point or being kind of a brat, but, like, you want someone that still holds herself well, whether they're winning or losing. Cause I think that's a big time um, character trait to have just for life in general. What does a typical official visit look like for the Yukon women's tennis program? Um, so typically like the girl, the girl coming on the visit will stay with uh, one of the girls on the team. We show them around campus um, and all, you know, not just our facilities, but all the different facilities we have between strength and conditioning um, and you have them come visit like our academic advisor. Um, and sometimes, you know, taking them to other sporting events. A lot of the times we hope that people will come during one of the women's basketball games because <laughs> those are a ton of fun. Um, but also even men's basketball, any, any other sport, I think all, I've been to quite a few different sporting events here at UConn. And I mean, they're all a ton of fun. I, just getting these girls involved in the community that's here, not just with athletics at UConn, but everywhere, you know, and just showing them the, not just obviously, um, you know, our athletic facilities, but everything that I have to offer on the academic side. And usually sometimes getting some of the girls, you know, to go to classes with some of the other girls, just to see what a typical class day um, is like. And honestly, just giving them the best possible experience they can have here at UConn. Um, basically with our, our, our girls on our team. What is it like, obviously, as a coach, seeing those players, the recruits, see the jerseys that they will be wearing for the next four years? Sorry, can you repeat that again? The... Mm -hmm. What is it like, obviously, seeing the prospective student athletes see the jerseys that they will be wearing at UConn for the next four to five years? Uh, I think it's great. I mean, you know, most most division one tennis players um I think they get a lot of great things um as apparel so I think it kind of I think it really excites kids just to see um you know not just what they'll be wearing but who they'll be representing so um there's always excitement from that what advice would you have high school women's tennis players looking to play in college um I would my first and foremost um, is always to get very clear on what you want in a school. Um, and it also comes down to like, not just what, what your parents want, what your other coaches want, everything, but be, going to somewhere where you truly want, want to go. Um, I've found that a, sometimes a lot of kids will just go to a school because of a name or whatever, but um, make sure it's the best fit for you. Um, Personally, when I went to Memphis, I, until I was seen by my college coach um, at a tournament, I had no idea about Memphis, nothing. 
And when I went on my visit, I was not expecting much of anything. I wasn't even that excited. I went there and I absolutely loved it. I loved the girls on the team. I loved um, the coaches. I loved just the school, the city. Um, so just realizing that it, it has to be something that you, you truly love because you're gonna spend, I think, four or five of the most important years. Um, and then, you know, just, just to be a great competitor and to work hard. Um, I think those are most important to, and to really have that passion, not just now in juniors, but that to continually develop and grow. Um, and always, you know, like I said, just to be open and flexible to schools. Sometimes until you go on a visit, you're not gonna, you don't know if you're gonna truly love it or truly like it. And um, and always, just always be hungry as, as a player and as a person to continually keep growing. That's great advice. What advice would you give future college coaches looking to get started in the industry of college coaching and tennis? Um, so to just be uh, strong in your own uh, coaching philosophy, uh, I think that most coaches that I've met are, are, and they have this direction. And, but also at the same time, I think it's a balance between um, evolving that coaching strategy, not staying completely stuck on that. Um, and always just be willing to work with the players. Uh, it's, you know, out of our eight to nine girls that are on our team, ev everyone's completely different. So sometimes my, my philosophy with one girl sometimes might be a little bit different um, with the other girl. So just being flexible and, uh, and just to continually grow as a coach, like I said before, I think it's so important, um, not just in coaching, but just life in general. And and to be growth, have a growth mindset towards uh, your coaching philosophy and all at the same time, just have fun. I think I personally have been like too uh, strict in my own process and not having fun. And I've kind of changed a bit of my philosophy and it's just, it kind of, it transforms my own coaching philosophy just to have fun out there and just to continually grow as a coach through that process. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the UConn Women's Tennis Program at? Yeah, so UConn Women's Tennis is UConn W Tennis um, for Instagram. Mine is Marge On Deck for Instagram. And yeah, the Twitter, I'm not really on the Twitter game. But so basically more Instagram game. Thank you again, Coach Marjorie On Deck for your interview and best of luck in your future with the UConn women's tennis program as the assistant coach thank you so much it was a pleasure to be on here and i'm really grateful that you had me on. thank you you can find brandon sports talk on facebook at brandon sports talk instagram at brandon sports talk twitter at talk underscore brain and you can find me on youtube at brandon sports talk don't forget to like comment and subscribe thank you again coach marjorie on deck for your interview and best of luck in your future thank you you too have you've been watching brandon sports talk Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.